Warlocks, as I've said before, are one of the most customizable classes in D&D 5th edition. The reason for this is two of their core class abilities, Eldritch Blast and Eldritch Invocations. I have already made a video covering Eldritch Blast, which you can find in the description of somewhere. So in this video, I will be covering invocations, what they are, what my favorite ones are, and how you can use them to create unique, customizable characters. So what are Eldritch Invocations? They are, essentially, the way that magic manifests within your Warlock. Each one gives you a unique, specific ability, such as being able to detect magic at all times, or sucking the life out of your enemies whenever you hit them with your weapon. You start with two invocations at second level and grow up to eight invocations at 18th level. You can swap out an invocation anytime you take a level in Warlock, and some invocations have a prerequisite, such as a subclass or pact or level requirement. In my opinion, the abilities granted by Eldritch invocations are similar to that of a subclass of feet but you are able to change them and swap them out and get more as you level up. This allows you to truly create the warlock that you want to play, or the one that your party really needs. Why does this make warlocks more customizable? There are over 50 different Eldritch Invocations, and you get to choose up to 8 of them at high levels. That means there are over a few million different combinations of abilities you can make within your warlock. Additionally, the ability to swap out invocations as you level up allows you to really take control of your character. If you have an ability that you're not really using, you can just swap it out. If you're taking a different role in the party, you can also swap one out. If you're traveling to a new location and you really need something for water breathing, guess what? There's an invocation for that. This gives you an unparalleled amount of mechanical versatility, which allows you to create a myriad of unique characters. I will now give you a brief overview of my favorite Eldritch Invocations. The following 25 or so invocations aren't necessarily the most powerful, min-maxable ones out there. These are just my personal favorite for the amount of fun I have when playing, because they give unique or interesting or like just fun abilities to your characters. Starting with the invocations available straight away and moving up through the levels and prerequisites as we go, I will briefly overview what they do mechanically, how that can be helpful to you, and how you can use that to add a unique bits of flavor to your character. I've already covered all five Eldritch Blast invocations in my Eldritch Blast video, so if you're wondering why they're missing or you're interested in them, the video link is somewhere. Beast Speech. You can talk to animals. In the right setting, this is hugely helpful for scouting purposes and discovering secrets that no humanoid saw. It is great for roleplay and would work for any character that has an inherent connection to animals. Devil's Sight allows you to see through darkness both normal and magical. This is potentially a huge advantage as you could cast darkness on a room and be the only person who can see. This lends itself to a ruthlessly effective character and has many fun flavoring options regarding your character's eyes, like maybe they have cat eyes, or maybe they're a unique color, or maybe all black. There's just many ways you can go with that. Eldritch Sight. You can cast Detect Magic at will. This is incredible for sensing spells, traps, and magical influence. This suits an inquisitive, sleuthing character who is suspicious of or interested in magical influence. Eyes of the Runekeeper. Read any written text. This is very fun for an archaeologist type and can be immensely helpful for solving mysteries in the right setting. It can also be used for communication purposes, such as discreetly speaking with specific members of your party or communicating with someone who can't speak your language. Is. Gaze of Two Minds. Perceive through a willing humanoid's senses. You can turn a party member into a scout or informant. This is super helpful, as you can send one person ahead to scout and they don't have to report back to the party. You can inform the rest of the party and move using their knowledge. It also only takes your action to maintain, so you can still use your full movement and bonus action on your turns. This is really cool for a battle tactician style of character, or some sort of human warg. Mask of Many Faces. Instantly cast the sky self at will. This is obviously super helpful if you are the party's face, infiltrator, or anytime you're being pursued. 
Misty Visions. Instantly casts Silent Image at will. This is super fun for a tricky character who enjoys deceiving people with illusions. It is a more powerful version of the cantrip Minor Illusion. Now we're moving on to invocations that require you to be at level 3 for you to have a Pact Boon. Improved Pact Weapon. This allows your conjured weapons to be better and gives you more options for these said weapons. This makes all of your summoned weapons plus one weapons, and the ability to conjure any weapon allows you to treat these as a Green Lantern style anything goes summon weapons. Or you could alternatively view it as a master of all weapons type of character. Investment of the Chainmaster. This makes your familiar stronger, more dynamic, and more versatile. This is excellent for a character whose familiar is a core part of how they fight. It can make your familiar seem more like a partner than a pet. Voice of the Chainmaster. This allows you to sense through your familiar at any distance and speak from them. This is really fun for role-playing situations and pairs well with the investment of the Chainmaster. If you want to incorporate your familiar in a more strategic way, you should take both of these up and then you have a very powerful familiar. Now we're moving on to level 5 invocations. Farscribe allows you to cast a modified sending spell at will. This is one of my favorite new invocations brought to us in Tasha's. It is like a personal contact list of people who you can chat to. The ability to cast it unlimited times means that you can have full in-depth discussions at any range you want. This is super helpful for splitting up the party and long-distance communication with important NPCs. Gift of the Deaths. You can swim fast and breathe underwater. You can also cast a spell water breathing on your friends. In the right setting, like a Pirates or Seafaring or Atlantis campaign, this is so rad. It'll make you a valuable asset to any crew. One with the Shadows. You can turn invisible when you're in a shadow. This is really fun for sneaking and roleplay. You can just take a step back mid-conversation and dramatically disappear Batman style. This obviously lends itself to sneaky characters such as an informant, scout, spy, sad boy billionaire, or assassin. First thing, Blade. Whenever you take the attack action on your turn, you can make two attacks instead of one. This is awesome if you are creating a weapon-based warlock, and I highly recommend it if you want to keep up with the other melee combat classes. Tome of Levestus. As a reaction, you can instantly cover yourself in ice and protect yourself. This one is super fun as like a little panic shield. If you get overwhelmed in battle and you need a bit of health quickly, you can instantly become covered in a shell of ice. Now we're moving on to level 7 invocations. Ghostly Gaze. Once per day, you can see through solid objects for one minute. This is a unique ability which can be used for sneaking, investigating, and scouting. Relentless Hex. This allows you to teleport 30 feet towards your hexed creature. This is great for a character who really doesn't want their enemies to escape. Level 9 Invocations. Ascendant Step. You can fly up to 20 feet for the mere cost of concentration. This fits many characters and could be flavored in many interesting ways, such as angelic wings, a phantasmal tentacle lifting you up, you could have thrusters, you could do all sorts of interesting stuff. Whispers of the Grave. You can cast Speak with Dead at will. This is super underrated and can help you gain information that may have been lost when somebody died. It fits the archeologist character type, a murder investigator, or any character who has a spooky, uncanny connection with things that have passed. Level 12 Invocations Bond of the Talisman. Teleport to the person wearing your talisman, and vice versa. This is awesome for scouting or infiltration missions, or if someone needs to split up from the party for some reason, because you can always instantly bring them back. Life Drinker. Your weapon deals extra necrotic damage equal to your charisma modifier. This is super cool flavor for weapon damage and it gives a really cool image of you attacking someone and sucking their life force out. And the damage output is nothing to scoff at. Level 15 Invocations Master of Myriad Forms. This is a better version of Mask of Many Faces. 
cast Alter Self at will. The core difference here is that it is not an illusion, like the sky itself. This allows you to actually change your appearance. This is fantastic for sneaking and for social campaigns. The ability to instantly change your appearance would make you an invaluable asset to most criminal organizations. Shroud of Shadow. Turn invisible at will. That would have been cool editing if I went invisible. Anyways, this is insane. You literally have no reason to be visible anymore. This can work for most character types and is especially helpful for someone trying to avoid being caught or disappear from society while staying in the same place. Visions of Distant Realms. Cast Arcane Eye at will. This creates an invisible, magical, floating eye that you can see through. This is super fun for scouting and infiltration purposes and can be flavored in really cool ways. This is the single best way to scout on this list. There we have it, I've only covered around half of the invocations available to Warlocks, and these are just my favorite ones. There might be ones that excite you more or that help you create a really powerful character. So have a look at that, they're very exciting. All of this customization doesn't even account for the cool combos you can make when you mix more than one of these invocations together to create a truly distinctive and unique character. Warlocks are also, in my opinion, the best intermediary class between full casters and combatants. But when argument could be made for paladins, I think that Warlocks high level spell slots beats them out just by a bit. So if you're new to spell casting and are a bit overwhelmed by spells at different levels and different amounts of them per day, just choose the Warlock. In levels 1 through 10 you only have 2 spell slots a day and they're the same level. It's super simple and super rewarding. Invocations are one of the most interesting class abilities in D&D 5th edition, and I hope that this video inspired you to create some fun, dynamic Warlock characters and truly customize them and make them your own. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, please like, comment, and subscribe and all that jazz, and I'll see you next time. Bye!